Where were you before this? Having you, having, you, having yourself a day? I got all my cups PFT in front of me. I've uh, I've had a couple cocktails. Mm. That's what you want to say if you want to tell people that you're drunk, <laughs> but uh, sound classy about it. A couple of couplers. Had some cocktails. It makes me think of martinis. It makes me think that you were just drinking martinis, which I used to think were like a tasty cocktail, but turns out they're not at all. <laughs> at, at all. all. When you say cocktail, people imagine that you're whatever you're drinking, you're doing it with like a white velvet glove on. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that voice you're hearing is the vice president of football operations of this podcast and league leader in the fantasy football Barcel content league mm -hmm. and kind of my boss. I don't really know. Kind of, yeah. PFT commenter. Did Welcome. he just give me permission to fire him? Kind of, I yeah. Hell yeah, kind of he did. He I've, always you, considered, kind of I've always considered a boss as like someone if they can get you fired. Like if they can say like you got to get rid of that person – then they'd be gone. Like, you could do that to me. Do you so, think I could? Yeah. Uh, maybe. See, here's the thing. You're painted on the walls. I, I am painted on the walls. So, so is Hank, though. Oh, Hank's fuck. on the wall, too. Um, I could strongly recommend that you get fired. But since you've been here for so long, I think that at the end of the day, Dave would have a talk with you. If I went to Erica to get you fired, she would fire you. If I went to Dave, he'd say, okay. Let me talk to Hank first. But if you talk to, if you convince Big Cat that I need to be fired, Big Cat would do the rest, and I would be fired. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I feel like you guys got to fire Hank at some point. Just, just no, no just point having see. this power at your fingertips and never yield it. Just wield to it. I actually want to fire, want to try to fire Hank just to see if it actually is within my power. Like not, not a serious fire. Like it'll be a joke between us. Yeah, it's a prank. Just yeah, for just like a, a year or so. Yeah. <laughs> just fire for a full year. Dude, you're playing a crazy game right now. You got three drinks in front of you, which is yeah. it's like a it's like a brunch where you go and get your, your Bloody Mary or your coffee, your water, your orange juice. But your dip spit is in a venti coffee cup and it looks exactly like coffee. That's the trick, yeah. Is that what you're doing on purpose? Uh it's kind of a happy coincidence, but it's better than than having it in just like a water bottle where everyone's like, if you see this dip spit right here in a water bottle, people are like, "Oh, that's gross as shit." But since it's in a Starbucks cup, it looks you know, classy, like, but huh. what if you like accidentally drink it? That will be a mind challenge for me later. P <laughs> PFT, when you're when you're getting drunk, I see that you have the game fuel there as well to complement the Bud Light. Are you a like like me personally, if I have six beers, seven beers, like that's just that's just wearing me down, slowing me down. I'm eventually going to get tired and just knock out. Do you need that extra boost, or can beers just get you to the next level, or is there you no mix it up a little bit? Beers don't. I, I'm like you. If I have, I'd say if I have like four beers, I just want to go to sleep. If I have nine beers, then I want to keep going. Right now, I'm in like the uh, the six to seven drink. We range. gotta get you past that. So you got nine innings coming up. Yeah, too. I've got nine innings later. So now I'm drinking a uh, a Mountain Dew Amp. We know that uh, a high life is the champagne of beers, but what's the cocaine of beers? Ooh, four loco. <laughs> I think that that's a strong answer. Four loco, uh, two eleven, Steel Reserve. Something with no anything with numbers in it. Yeah, <laughs> if you got alcohol with numbers in it, that's actually going to get you fucked up. That's very true. If you put a number in there or the letter X anywhere, <laughs> yeah. then you know it's game. And time. if there's multiple X's in it, uh, you, you can just plan to not remember that night. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, you have been leading our league in fantasy points, and uh, I saw Hank even mention earlier this week that on part of my take, you guys often say that you don't want to talk about our fantasy teams. But is it, uh, have you been holding out on us this entire time? It seems like you guys might be absolute gurus in fantasy football no i mean we don't want to talk about our secret sauce it's pretty clear no one wants to hear about how great we are at fantasy football so because is that, we are is that why you you encourage the no one wants to care because you're trying to encourage the disinformation out there you don't want people talking so you're trying to just keep that the talk to a minimum so that you can hold in all the secrets i'll put it this way if if i own the recipe for coca-cola i wouldn't be out there telling people how to make great soft drinks and, I and think then you, know, you would tell people, like, we don't give don't a care. shit about soft drinks. Well, Hank, do you care what goes into a soft drink? No, probably not. As long as right? it tastes good. As long as it tastes good at the end of the day. So, yeah, we are maybe we are trying to keep some of that information to ourselves. But in reality, it's just mostly dumb luck. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't even draft my team. Oh, that's true. I was Spencer Hawes draft I was on a you. plane. Uh, I was flying somewhere. I forget what I was up to that weekend. But I texted the guys. They were like, do, do you guys have any sleeper picks? And then I just texted some players out that I was – I was feeling high on. I think we drafted like one, maybe two of those players. But at the end of the day, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. 
I really what, don't. What front office member is that like in the NFL? Is there anybody that just like sprinkles a little bit of advice on their team or like a, a GM or someone that, that has like a slight amount of, of favor? It's like a Mark Davis type move where it's like, yeah, maybe I like these couple guys, but Mayock, you do the rest of the work. I would say probably uh, if you look back at the old Redskins teams, Vinny Serrato, his job was pretty much to be Dan Snyder's volleyball and racquetball partner. And then he would just That's an important job. He would occasionally be like, "Yeah, I agree, Dan." And that was his job. He would be <laughs> like, "Yeah, no, job. you're right." And he got paid, you know, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever it was, just to agree with his buddy. Uh, so that's kind of the the niche that I've found myself in. I think when it comes to this team, is just we're we're leaving well enough alone. We're not making any roster moves. We're not substituting players. If you're on a bye week, we keep you in the starting lineup because <laughs> we want the guys to gel. Chemistry right. is an important part. Occasionally, I'll send a message, though, to somebody on my fantasy that? team. Like, if uh, if I had Todd Gurley last year in one of my leagues, I benched him after he took a knee on the one. Just send a message. Yeah. Let the guy know, like, hey, no one's above the team. Right. You, we need those points ju just as much as, you know, you need to play. So. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it's messed up that players, like, hate uh, when people say that to them? No, I think it's good. I think it, it, it keeps everybody motivated. At the end of the day, we pay their salaries. <laughs> That's when you fact, think, when you think about it, yeah, with the rise of red zone, would anybody give a shit about the red zone channel if it wasn't for fantasy football and gambling? Wow. Not me. That's Probably not. That's a fact. Yeah, I think that that's a really valid point that we're keeping them afloat. We're paying their salary as well, Hanson. It's it's mostly that uh, I like to feel like I'm in charge by telling players that they fucked up when they screw me over in fantasy. They they don't care. You Nor like, should they. You like to feel like you're in charge, yet there has yet to be a roster move. You guys started o Odell Beckham on a bye week. How, what, how does that work? Did if we like, win? You No, you did. I'm just saying that <laughs> okay. feeling of power, Like sometimes like people uh, take that and they d use it by like benching certain players or moving things around. You just, just, you just take the power and don't use it. Uh, yeah, it's about knowing when to push and when to pull. So sometimes you have to be the heavy. Sometimes you have to be the good guy. Uh, you ever have a substitute teacher in elementary school? Sure. Where they come in and, like, right off the bat, they're just a hard ass and, you know, okay, we're not fucking around today. Sometimes you need that. And sometimes you need somebody that comes in and they wheel the cart in. Like your TV friend's cart. mom. What I've been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, fuck yeah. What I've been doing is I've been wheeling the, the VCR cart in. Yeah. And guess what? Fire guess what, team? We're watching Bill Nye today. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Who does? That's actually uh, foreshadowing. You're going to be with. Uh, can we say that? Can we announce that? Or should I try to save that? We could say that. Yeah. You're going to be at breaking, breaking news to the Fantasy Football Factory. PFT is going to be with Bill Nye uh, on Friday. That's no pretty, way. pretty yeah. big. In, in D.C., taking a little train down. I'm, that's what I'm really excited about. So I'm going to World Series Game 3. Lucky enough to go to that. Uh, but the biggest part of the weekend is I get to take a train down to DC, and I love riding trains. That's fantastic. It's Are you going to maybe stop in the uh, a food cart, or uh, some maybe maybe have a beverage while you're there? Maybe bring a beverage with you. I might bring bring a beverage with me. I'm taking the Acela, which is nice. I might hang out in the quiet car and shush people. Yeah, uh, I, don't I, f know. I used to think that the Acela was faster than the other trains because it's the Acela Express, but I think it just makes fewer stops. Shit, it, really? Is it actually faster? It's faster. Is it? I was under the impression it was faster. I think it just I, I it gets there faster, but I don't know if right. it moves faster though. You might be right. In which case, I'm disappointed, just like you were, to find out. It's a fucking that bummer. Case. Yeah, that's a that's a fraud. It's a fraud train. But I, I'm excited about taking a train just in general because I like train travel. Yeah, it's the best. And yeah. you're gonna get the what's this Bill Nye situation? So we're getting down to D.C. on uh, on Friday afternoon, meeting up with Major League Baseball. They're doing some digital show down there, and uh, I'm going to be on a segment with Bill Nye. Shut up. And they were like, is that cool if you do a segment with Bill Nye? Are you comfortable with that? I was like, hell yeah, I am. I love Bill Nye. Bill, 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 Bill. I think that there was a time when Bill Nye was the top scientist in the United States, and I think that there was a time when he got surpassed by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think that we were seeing the pendulum swing back towards Bill Nye being our top scientist, and I think Neil deGrasse Tyson's kind of fallen by the wayside. I agree, and with both those guys, they, they fell victim to kind of the same thing, whereas the more you know about them, the lamer they are. Yeah. So like once the internet, I yeah the internet was not good for either of them. Once I started to get Bill Nye's opinions on stuff, I was just like Bill, you're a dork. Right. And then I turned to Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I was like, holy shit, I thought Bill Nye was a dork, and now Neil deGrasse Tyson's out here like lecturing about like inconsistencies in Star Wars movies. Yeah. As it pertains to gravity, uh, so now the pendulum is going back. We're running back to Bill Nye. We're going back to Bill Nye, and he's welcoming us with open arms. I'm excited. I'm doing some sort of like gender re reveal thing. 
with Bill Nye. No way. I don't exactly know the concept or exactly how it's going to go down, but um, so yeah. you get to pick Bill Nye's gender. I get to choose Bill Nye's. Gender. He's a sign. He's a doctor. <laughs> it could go either way. Exactly. Yeah, it could yeah. be a man or a woman. That's a fallacy that all doctors are men. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long have you been in the fantasy football game? Has this been something that's been a part of your life for a long time? Do you remember your first time playing? Well, as an investment, we like to say, how long have you been in the fantasy football space? Oh. I've been in the fantasy space since two thousand three. Uh, my freshman year at college when my roommate got me into it, I called him a dork. I was like, oh, fantasy football, that sounds nerdy. Uh-huh. And then he showed me, he helped me draft my first team. I remember only one player from my first team. Who was that? Dante Stallworth. He was mm-hmm. my third wide receiver. Was he still on the Saints at that time, probably? I think so, yeah. He must have been on the Saints. But Those pre, productive pre-killing years. a guy. Yeah, yeah, pre-killing a guy. Yeah, pre-manslaughter. He must, um, his mind must have been so free then. Yes, absolutely. Now he's like a, he's a big politics guy. Really? I went out, to, I went out for beers with Dante Stallworth about... Eight months ago. Did you tell him that he was on your fantasy team? I did not. I didn't want to be that, that dork because I'm sure he's heard that like a million times in his life. Uh, but he was. we were talking and we talked about... Uh, he had he had some bad tweets about 9-11, if you can believe that. <laughs> uh, but he's, he's, like, he's a big political guy now. He has done some consulting for like Huffington Post. He's been on CNN. And uh, he talked about his tweet that he put out saying how 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> And he regrets that he very much. He talked to you about that? Yeah, he brought it up. He was like, you know, one thing I've had to overcome you getting... You've been on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, I went down a dark rabbit hole. Exactly. He, Did he play for the Seahawks ever? He. Oh, good question. Wow, yeah. He watched, loose Change to pick up He there. watched a few uh, episodes of Loose Change and he got converted. Uh, but now he's like, he looks back at that iteration of himself. He's like, oh, it was a shithead. Did he like apologize to you? Was it almost like you were like the standard bearer for the in- internet and he's like, you're the one he wanted to apologize to? He did not apologize to me, but he was, a, he's a very nice guy. He's a super smart guy. And he's like, learned from his mistakes a little bit in the past. And he was like, I like what you guys at Barcelona are doing, except there's one guy that I really, really don't like there. Shut up. And I was like, oh, Dave, it's Dave. It's, it's <laughs> obviously Dave. <laughs> And he goes, no, no, it's not Dave. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, uh, somebody's uncle. He's someone's uncle. I was like, oh, it's Chaps. No way. And then I pulled up some tweets that Chaps had sent to <laughs> Dante Stallworth. And let's just say, <laughs> I understand why Dante Stallworth would not be a fan what of he, Uncle Chaps. What did Chaps say to it? Or what was somebody's it just? uncle. Brought up uh, some transgressions that Stallworth has that you alluded to earlier. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I would say them behind his back, not tweet them directly at him. Chaps, like, I'm a good citizen. Chaps went right at him with it. <laughs> wow, yeah. what a guy! What a guy! Let he who is without sin, exactly. Et but yeah, he was on my first fantasy team, and uh, I was a big, I was a Yahoo stand for a while. I remember when they first did. That's how they used to get you. Week one, they would give you live scoring, get you hooked on it. Yeah, like your first hits free. And then you'll come back for more. And I was a big fan of Yahoo's uh, fantasy football system. And then suddenly you're sucking dick in an alley for live scoring. Hey, dude, you, you're telling me. <laughs> you're just shivering because you can't get any of those sweet ass live <laughs> scores. Scratching my arms. Yeah, it's tough. it was bad. It was a bad scene. Uh, and then ESPN offered season long live scoring. And then that shifted me over to being an ESPN guy for a while. And now I'm in one of each, which is just a nightmare on game day when yep. you have to go back and forth between apps. You yep. toggle. It's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. Really rough. Yeah. How many? So 2003. That's 16 years. How many championships in those 16 years? Zero. Whoa, <laughs> PFT. It, well, it's like a Nationals thing. You're on a drought right now at the Nationals, and what? you're about to get rid of that, uh, God willing. And maybe it's the same thing. You're in first place right now. Mm-hmm. I've come in second place, I think five or six times. Damn. I don't think I've ever won one. You oh YP that was the other one. YP is similar, not as long, but zero championships. Yeah, he can't he can't scratch, but he plays like six teams a year, and he just can't win a championship. It's tough, but it's it's an elusive thing, you know. It's mm-hmm. something that you're gonna chase, and, and it'll probably keep you up at night. It requires a lot of luck too, so yeah. it's not just total skill. Many people are saying that is it the Dante <laughs> curse? Since yeah. I have it, I had him on my first one. Uh, I. I had one where I, I definitely should have won, where I had – you ever been in a league where you have by far the best team for all, what, 14 weeks of the season? I outscored everybody else by like two 300 points, something like that. And then in, uh, in that one week, I ran into Jamal Charles, who put up like – he had four touchdowns and 200 yards. I had Chris Johnson, Thomas Jones, and uh, my third running back was 
I want to say like Adrian Peterson. I had, I had three monsters Sheesh. in the peak of their performance and just dominated everybody. And then in that one week. Couldn't get it done at the end of the year. Didn't have the clutch gene. Yeah, it comes down to the playoffs, which is honestly, in some ways, it feels a little bit unfair. You could just dominate the entire season and get it robbed from you, but that's I feel like that's, that's good for the nerds, the though. Like, it can't just be math and numbers. Like, there has to be some element of, like, if this team's playing in the play or this team's playing at the end of the year and they suck, like. Right. They could get, everyone can get fucked. Mm hmm. We're, they, fantasy football is an equal opportunity fucker. It is. It is. It's a cruel mistress. It absolutely is. Do you remember any of the your team names throughout the years? Any any uh, particular puns you might have spun to to make a cool team name? So when it came to naming my teams, that was that was one time when I would always like pull back and what? I wouldn't really go wow. for it because everyone's expecting you of all people. Well, because everyone's expecting you at that point. It's like even before though, make before a joke. PFT existed before PFT existed. Th those two thousand three to two thousand nine, ten years. Like that was that's why that's where you came. Like that's where you were born. Is like making like football PFT related origins. jokes. Yeah, it was like uh, on on St. Patrick's Day. Do you expect your drunkest friend to be the most out of control? Probably not. He's probably it's it's uh, amateur night. <laughs> so when it came to naming my teams, I was like, I'm going to let you guys have your fun. Right. I'm going to stay back here and name my team RG69 Damn. for the third straight year. Do yeah. you even remember, like, your first football puns? Do you remember when what got you into, like, uh, flipping names in, like, uh, in clever ways in, in the football world? Do you remember what was that through fantasy football? Was it through early football writing? What, or, or was it something that just kind of happened throughout your life? It's a good question. I think when I was in high school, I was playing on a diversity soccer team and I wanted to be the announcer for like the freshman and the JV teams when they would play the games before, before our games. And so then I would make, I would do the starting lineups and I would give the players Berman type nicknames as they were running out in the field. No way. I'm trying to remember what football the, guy. Yeah. What some of the names were that I gave, uh, there was, uh, shit. Let's see. One of the goalies I called the, the Shermanator, and it was before American Pie came <laughs> out. His name was like Sherman something. I call him the Shermanator. And um, you beat American Pie, so American Pie copied you with the Shermanator. I think so. I'm, I'm trying to remember the guy's exact name because it was Who along did this fan. Yeah, this yeah. is fucked. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where I first got started. I forget the names that I would give to some of the guys, but um, I, I would make a note to like, okay, if it was the JV team and I had five minutes to make the introductions. Like before the intros would start, I would sit down and look at all the names, and then I would do I would cr come up with nicknames for some of the opponents, and they would be running out into the field as I said their names, and they'd look up at the press box like, "Who the fuck is oh. this guy giving me a nickname? <laughs> like I don't know you." Was it a nice nickname or were they like uh, derogatory nicknames? Definitely derogatory it? for yeah. the opponents. Yeah, and, you and have more to. favorable for the home team. Yeah, you have to as a premier internet. Jokesman. Oh, I remember what it was. Okay, so our goalie's name was uh, Luis Lobo, uh -huh. and I said it's Lobo Cop. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's go. That was my first one that I ever made was Lobocop. You must have had a fucking rush, though. It must have, like, set off some kind of chemical reaction in your brain where you're like, I'm about to do this shit fucking big time. I'm yeah. about to take this to the major leagues. Yeah, 13 years from now, you guys will all see me. I'll have a podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the all-time flex. As an internet jokesman, premier internet jokesman, are there, like, what is the... What is the window of opportunity for a good fantasy football joke because i feel like it's low but i feel like there's a lot of people out there always trying to always trying to make them slap there are a couple of things you have to look at i think um you can be the too soon guy you can make a really inappropriate team name that is like way 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 too soon and if you wait for another year to make that exact same team team name you're kind of lame but then if you let nine years pass and recall like a tragedy a Ray Lewis type nickname, a Ray Carruth perhaps. Exactly. Type then it then it kind of cycles back and a it Mark becomes Chimura. classical Burris. <laughs> yeah, Mark Chamorro's hot tub, Chamorro time machine, that sort of thing. Uh, that would be that would play right now. Right. <laughs> I remember somebody in my league had like a uh, Jovan Belcher reference back in 2011. So after, deep cut callback after he like killed himself in the Chiefs parking lot. That was way too soon. But the shock value of that. Made it stand We're out. We're still a talking about it. To it's this bad. Day. It was a bad team name by any stretch of the imagination. But if you make that joke like a week after it happens, it's better than if you make it a year after it happens. But the best is making it nine years after it nine, happened. Nine years later, when we've all desensitized ourselves from it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Time plus tragedy equals comedy. Yep. That's the old formula. What is your uh, so your big hat? Your guys' plan going forward for the rest of the season? 
Uh, same. Just don't prob- touch the roster. Our plan. This is how we manage our team. Honestly, Sunday night, I'll ask Big Cat, "How's our team doing?" And he'll say, "Ah, oh, shit. I don't know. I don't know how to log into it." And then we'll ask Hank how our team's doing, and then he'll read the scoreboard, and then we win. That's that's our management strategy. It's that simple. Yeah, that's it. That's really it. How about like, would you be open to trading any of the guys on your bench? Like yeah, you sure. haven't put. Any- <laughs> <laughs> you got Marvin Jones Jr. who had like one of the best fantasy weeks of all time last week, and he just sat on your bench as you well, guys. Oh, Odell won. Beckham, yeah, because he's hungry. Because we we're making him want it. Yeah, that's you I have mean, to show me something in practice if you want to get in the game. You got Drew Brees sitting on the bench too. Do you uh, you anticipate big numbers for him when he comes back? Um, or maybe he won't even get to no. the game because Russell Wilson's your, your your top guy. I think Russell is going to be our guy moving forward. Now that I know that he's our quarterback. Uh, Seems like he's the right right choice for that position. Who are backup running backs? You got uh, Rashad Penny, Peyton Barber, and uh, Ty Montgomery. Okay, I'll trade. I'd be willing to hear an offer for Peyton Barber. There you have it. Wow. I mean, it seems like your starting lineup is just the, you got a thick starting lineup, and, and there's not a lot of reason to change anything so, that's going on. In wait, there. we've got Russell Wilson, Odell Beckham. Let's see. Read it off. Okay. This is good. First good time radio. looking at the team. This <laughs> Russell Wilson, Calvin Ridley, Odell Beckham, Dalvin Cook. I knew we had him. Sonny <laughs> Michelle knew we had him. Zach Ertz, Cooper Cup. Okay. Great uh, team. I, I wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't um, even put Marvin Jones in. Oh, wait. Over, uh... we've, got, we've got Baltimore on a bye week this week. We should probably start a defense. I don't, I don't know. know. It's Hank, worked. It worked for me last Hank week. Hank didn't start one last week, and he beat me without one. So uh, you might not even have to. You might even be better just sticking to your guns. I've done the thing with the, a team that I have uh, as my defense in Monday Night Football, and I've just benched them before because I've been winning going into Monday Night Football. I don't want to get the negative score. That's, that's one of that's our, a, our main tenets on this show. I this love is it. A, a little a nugget that we have for the listeners to get over the top and win their games. Someone had Darnold. The one that hurt the most that I saw this past week was they had Darnold and Le'Veon Bell. So it was like they figured that each of them were going to get at least positive points. And Le'Veon Bell had like five or six points and Darnold had negative seven and they lost by one. Ooh, that was tough. I pulled a major Jimbo this last week, big time, Damn. in my other league. Lost a matchup. I should have won by 50 points because I had Aaron Rodgers on the bench. Oof. Started, Devastating. Started Kyler Murray. Devastating. And you know what? All the numbers said start Kyler. That's what the numbers said, so I blame math. Yeah, we're fa- we're into fading chalk on this show. We like to go uh, against the conventional wisdom, but that's just us. That's just how we think. One really smart thing that Yahoo's done this year on their app is, you know, they have the projected score mm-hmm. every week that they say that your guy's going to get. They also have something called the Fearless Forecast. Yes, a different when, projected when score. When you click on your team. Yeah. And all the Fearless Forecast is is like the best case scenario for your player. Uh-huh. So you see that and you're like, oh, holy shit, Kyler Murray's going to have 110 rushing yards with two touchdowns and then 200 yards passing with a touchdown this weekend. Got to start him. Yeah, good for, good on them to have multiple projections so yeah. they just can't be wrong. Exactly. It's He's genius. either going to do good or poorly and it's going to be one of the two. Yeah. They're smart guys. Brilliant stuff. Thank you for coming on, PFT. Do you have an official uh, Natitude prediction for tonight? When's this show coming out? It's coming out tomorrow. Okay. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, I will be hungover. Yes. That's my projection. Official PFT projection. You can st- stamp it. We'll Lock get, it in. We'll get stamp you some it. DHM Detox, PFT. Yes. So, some what? DHM Detox. What's that? Great product. It's going to change your life. It's going to It's going to knock become your hangover. best friend hangover. for hangovers. Do you have any right now? Yeah, we sure do. It's amazing. I'll give it to you right after this. Okay. Thanks, Hank. That's awesome.